Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm Stephen, and this is... Sonia. And we are here on behalf of the Silton Foundation. The Silton Foundation is a non-profit, which you can donate to, by the way, at uh, thesiltonfoundation.org. I think that's right. Uh, and they, if you are looking for, you know, extra things to get through the dance year, they give out like $10,000 worth of scholarships, uh, as well as event passes and such. So you should definitely go to that website and look them up. They're also giving you this free educational content. Ha ha ha. So what we're doing today for you on this video is we have a little bit of an intermediate advanced amalgamation here that we're going to give you some ideas to play with. And a little bit of it is going to be focused on the idea of some back and forth in partnering, not just in connection. So we're going to set up some opportunities and then give you a template to play within those opportunities. Anything you want to add in there? I absolutely love this one for the follow because as you work on it and progress in your dancing, you can make it be so many different things. Uh, and I'll go through the different variation with you. Make sure you can do the first one really well and easily before you throw yourself in something else and get a nosebleed for yourself. <laughs> All right, so jumping right in here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to be setting up for an assisted pirouette. So we're going to be walking back and off the track for count one, getting that hand rotating. Notice I'm not trying to pull the arm to me. I'm just rotating it up in place. I'm going to collect generally and step slightly down the track on count two, getting my other hand ready here so the follow can offer resistance. And I'm going to think about the tripod that I'm making here for where the follow's standing leg, where she's going to be rotating from, and then my two legs are going to be creating, and I want to try and make sure that my body angle is facing towards where her tripod is here. Now notice I've got this split. My hips are a little bit between where the foot is and where the point of contact of the hand is here so that I can offer the follow this rotation through the step. So, and you'll notice Sonia can actually feel the rate of weight transfer that I'm giving her through that rotation by how I'm using my body and how I'm offering the pressure into this hand. So, doing that for you one more time, uh, we've got one, I'm finding that two, we're going into that three, so now I know Sonia's going to be set up right there. For this particular one, I'm actually going to be letting my hand go down into the hips as I close, and I'm going to be stepping forward, right? We'll show you what's going to be happening over here in just a second, but that's going to be the thing for you. So, let me just show the leads their part on that all the way through footwork-wise. So it's going to be one, I'm backing off the track, two, I'm collecting and going down the track, three, I'm monitoring where that tripod's going to be. So my three is going to be rotated based off of where the follow puts their foot. So I'm going to pretend Sonia stepped a little bigger this time, my tripod got to here in this case. I let this foot collect, allowing this arm to arc down, and I'm going to be stepping out in front back into the track on a diagonal, offering an arm. Followers, first thing first, to make it easy on your partner. Normally, this is not the first movement you're going to do when the song starts, hopefully. So you already have your baseline energy and length of step. Please keep that going for your third step into the turn. Right? So if we were already doing sugar push before, right? we have, okay, he's giving me that much energy, I'm hopefully answering as he wished, then we go into our little assisted pirouette, don't go here. Like, why? What happened? Like, why? this is not a special energy move unless you would lead me such a big step, which leaders don't do that because it makes it really hard for me to find that new axis, right? So respect what you were already doing should be easy for him to set his tripod. So I'm having one, two, again, this arm is lifting. I like to lift the other arm because I'm not going to go into a turn like this. I find it really awkward. I'm going to be here, here, something where I have some circle around and it helps me keep my upper body engaged, frame here, or engaged. So we have one, two, here, right side body is back. As I'm setting up for my turn, I'm going to be opening, but see how this is still approximately in front of me when I step on my right foot? Because I want to have the space to create that um, bowing effect. So what I see often is as we step onto our right foot, we go three, but here there's no elastic, so then I'm really by myself to set the entire turn. So I want to have 
three, my foot is getting down, I'm, I'm still facing my arm, even if my body is slightly to the left, and as we're getting into this compression, see when his body also is opening, this sets me up for the Boeing effect, and then we can have this together, he's going to know when I'm ready to turn also, how much energy I put into the arm, this is a really good thing to just practice this without even doing a turn. Now when I'm stepping also into my third step, I prefer going in a bent leg. You could go, go with a straight leg. Some people like this stylistically. It's more balletic style, but it's a little bit harder also with the balance. So I like going with a bent leg, creating the bowing effect. By now, my body is open, right? What's well, going to give me the energy for the turn, the connection first, and then me closing my body. So the faster you close, and the, the more you close down, the faster you're going to go. So make sure you have this. You can go here. Make sure you're clean with whatever position you're in with your body. You can be here if this is safer and you don't want to go um, to the knee. So here, you can kind of play with the floor if you lose balance. You can be here. You can be in a turnout if that feels better. You could be here, but sometimes with this shape, which is really nice, um, if my partner is too close, uh, it can hit him in the turn. Or yeah, that'd be a really good option. So leaders, pay attention. You gotta do a little jump rope. If um, you break your foot or leg, <laughs> you didn't learn that here. <laughs> so be clear with your position. The first variation I'm gonna do, and this is gonna be the, um, let's say, intermediate turn, not this intermediate level, is um, like about half, half three-quarter turn. So I'm gonna go here, I put really little connection, um, little connection. It's a good connection, it's just a little lighter, I'm not sending a bunch of energy. And I do this half, three quarter turn, getting the connection with my partner. Hopefully I'm still on my right foot. If this one you needed to put down a little bit to, to readjust, it's okay. Just make sure when you get to your partner, you have some kind of opposition, and we'll come back to this in a second. So that's my first option. I do this one also, like these shoes are not really slippery or if I have a stickier floor, I'll do that option anyway. I'd rather see this cleaner than me trying to go for more turn look. Oh, great. Good variation, right? So start with that one. If that feels really comfortable, then start putting a little heavier connection, closing a little bit faster, to get um, one full turn in, so that would be here, preparation, turn, get to your partner. Even this one, something you can do is if you don't get this full turn, so facing public or something, you can also stop here. This is a quarter turn less, right? And this is a perfect position. You can still give a position to your partner, play with it, like play with the styling once you're here, it doesn't matter what you do as long as it's clean. If you manage to go all the way here, great. Whether you did the half turn or the full turn, make sure your connection, your frame is in before you catch your partner. So my frame is engaged, getting to my partner, and again, a little opposition here, but I don't go past where my frame can be. If you feel really good and the floor is really slippery and everything is amazing, Feel free to add more turns. The leaders should be there to catch you after this. <laughs> should be. Should be. Hopefully they are. Uh, leads. One of the things I'm making sure I'm doing with this one is I'm giving a very clear offering of the arm so the follower knows what to go for. Now, the follower can choose to not if they decide to not. Like, I've definitely done this one before where some followers have done this and just decided, like, no, and anchored out. <laughs> totally okay if the followers want to do that, but you want to give that offer into the arm. Now, a lot of times leads will make the mistake of trying to make this a pretty line up and down, but that rotates my shoulder forward and makes it a little less unstable. So I want you to think you're offering the arm at a little bit of a diagonal. So I still want this shoulder a little bit down and open in the back, but I don't want the hand to be at or behind my hips. I want that hand slightly in front of my hips. So the follow has a solid platform to latch onto there in whichever way the follow wants to do. 
Boom. I can generally get a good gauge off of how much rotation the follow is going to give me from pressure I feel in the hand, so I know when to be ready, but I want to assume that I need to be ready from the beginning anyways. Meaning, as I go through this, we're going to slow-mo it. One, and a two, and a three, and... The moment I see the follow starting to close, my goal is to get into position and up to where the follow can get that arm. You... Boop. And then the moment that the follow starts to touch me, like even slightly before, I'm going to start to polarize away just enough that I can follow through if I need to. Like, let's say the follow goes really far off. You, I can work with that. Or, I'm just going in up there and the follow doesn't need that much, I'm already set. And uh, the follow can post against me. Cool. Before we go into more details on this, I'm going to go ahead and give the exit so we can show you all the way through from a few different angles. Whatever timing we end up on here, we want to make sure that we're leading out on the upbeat. So that would be like a two, one and a two. So if I caught here, let's say a catch on the one, one and a two, I'm stepping back and prepping my body forward in contra. So the follow can be prepped on that two, three and four, five and six. And I say two, but remember that's upbeat. So you could catch on a two and then you still have one and two to go, or three and four, five, six, seven, eight. Whichever of those, two, four, six, eight, that you come to next after catching, and once you're all set, once everything's comfy, that's when you would step and prep out, and then you're just gonna have triple step, anchor step to reset to the next thing as an easy transition. Of course, you can, you know, amalgamate other things if you would so desire. For the followers, you have a lot of responsibility here also because when I get to my partner in that connection, I want first I want to make sure he feels my connection before I even go off. Like I'm not gonna go here and then surprise, <laughs> right? That'll happen. I'm connecting first and then going off, but I also want him to feel how much weight I'm putting and how far I'm gonna go. Like, do I actually want to extend? Like, I want to get here, and I'm like look, we're going to actually take four or six times or whatever until we redirect, or am I just going, okay, I'm good, can you lead me out, thank you. I still wait for him to lead me out, but I also want him to feel what my intention is with that stretch and the position I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to show you um, this version that we were just doing from a couple different angles, and we'll talk about some other variations and such. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one and two, three and four. You see we took a little extra time on that end piece just to make sure we were ready, and that was fun. Now we'll go from this way so you can see it from the back angle. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one and two. This time we got out a little bit faster. And it can look really cool. Again, it's about am I just catching and being like, okay, I survived my turn, or am I catching, slowing down, and then going in the right direction? However, you want to style it with your body. Again, make sure you're clear in the connection. Just going for a little bit of energy, or I'm going for a lot of energy. Uh, one of the big things, too, that you will both want to think of is making sure you're congruent on both ends with your opening and closing. When I'm thinking of my lead, this action where I take this step in is a close. This is my open, this is my close. That amount should be reflected back by the follow. So let's say I give the indication that this is going to be a quicker one. We can have a faster open close versus if I give a slower close, Yeah? Now, either of the people in the partnership can communicate that. Generally, like, the lead is going to be setting the tone, but if the follow decides to close sooner, it's not like I'm going to stop and be like, no, <laughs> that's not a great idea. We always want to do that yes and. So either person can communicate. Generally, it's going to be the lead setting the pace unless the follow decides that they want to communicate that thing. Um, there, there, anything you want to add on that? Yeah, the last thing for the followers is whether it's because your partner had so much faith in you and it's not happening today or you wanted to try something and it's not happening, um, make it work. Like there's so much 
uh, of syncopations we can do in West Coast Swing that's so on time and stylistic to literally save our mm, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> play with this. So I don't want to see you. I want to see you fight it, especially if you're practicing and you want to get to a clean turn. But if you're um, in a Jack and Jill or something, I don't want to see you fight it to the extent that it's like, oh, but eh, that doesn't look so great, right? But what I can do if I feel like I'm getting off balance is like, hmm, I don't know what I'm doing, right? But just style it, like go down, do a syncopation, come back to your partner, say, oh, actually it's gonna be this hand that you're getting and give him that connection. So make it clear in your body, syncopate it, make it rhythmical and tell your partner clearly at the end, sorry, this happened, so this is the connection we're having now. Uh, last thing about this is don't be afraid to take the concept and uh, play with it a little bit. Find other ways to make this work. Like one of the ways that I enjoy actually uh, using this two separate things. First one is I actually enjoy switching up the position I give the follow-up. So I can do all the same things from this area too and maybe have other transitions if I need a different handhold coming out next. The other thing that I quite enjoy doing, especially if I have a follow that feels like they can really hold that position, is once we get to here, I like trying to see if I can keep them on that foot a little bit longer for other various things. Now, that's not part of what we're going to teach you right now, though. I'm just giving you inspiration for you to try out some stuff on your own. So thank you for watching. If you liked it, we're Steven and Sonia. This was for the siltonfoundation.org. Again, nonprofit organization. Feel free to donate if you had a good year. If you didn't have a good year, they can help you with event passes and financial aid for your training. Thank you very much.